Welcome everybody to Spin Rack. Today we have a very important issue to be discussing. Mark Wade is being vilified in the press and YouTube. He is not no. being vilified in the press. He's being vilified. The press is on the what is it? Newsarama, um Bleeding Cool. Bleeding Cool. They are very much on Mark Wade's side. So then we can continue. And so they're trying to drag the good name of Mark Wade, who's one of the head writers for Marvel Comics mm -hmm. through the mud because of a of a of a uh, of a wild out there suit being bought from somebody who we don't even know of, you know. Well, I mean, the, there's a there's a YouTube channel, and then there's also a movement which the YouTube that channel is connected to. I think the channel is Co Comics Matter with um, your boy Zach, who is Richard Meyer, and he used to be a part of uh, Comics and Diversity. And I think uh, me, I've shared the site when he did some reviews of, um, uh, I think, some X-Men books from the 90s. And he talked about what the past comic books were like in comparison to today. And talk about the uh, SJW, the sort of uh, thing. SJW. So. That sort of stuff. SJW Marvel. And, you know, go through different... People stuck in the past who refuse to try and do something different. Look, there's nothing wrong. Let's just get to the crust of matter. We there's haven't got to the crust. The crust established the whole story. All right, Basically, this guy was critiquing comics, right? Mm -hmm. He was critiquing comics like we've done. We've critiqued comics. But the difference was is that at some point the pro said, well, what can you do? Now, the comic book industry, for a lot of creators that don't sell comics, is a market for when you go to Indiegogo and Kickstarter. Right. There's definitely a market. Steve Ditko, who used to have his books in um, Jim Hanley's universe. Um, That's Robin, a, comic company, a, comic, a comic book retail. comic book store that was in New York City. He had a small area of all of his black and white books that didn't really move that much. But Robin Schneider, who she um, started doing Kickstarters and Facebook promoting. And then those books were moving. And I think, who was it? Dan, what was it? Ber Beret. Beretton, he did the Nocturnals. I think, um, who is it? Jason Pearson also is, is doing a body bag Kickstarter. Did the Nocturnals get picked up by a publisher? Yeah, it did. It got a, it got a Kickstarter to get the first two editions uh, published, and then I think there's a third one. And then there was one book that they put out. So uh, a lot of things is, hap is different from the comic book market. Right. And it, it can bring you a lot of interest. There. So and this is what um, Richard Meyer from Comics Matter did. He did his book, which is called Jawbreakers. I think that's The Lost Souls. And he might have another book, but he did a case. He raised $400,000. Very successful. I, I, that is like banana successful. But you point, no, you pointed out to me that at this point, if you have a 1,000 true fans, right. and this is what he did. This is not a testament of the comic book industry. It's a testament of what you can make, you can monetize your fans. That is one of the most successful um, 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 kick, kick, uh, Kickstarter. Kickstarters oh, ever. Best I, mean, I mean, for a comic. And this is for a guy who is not even in the industry um, creating his own stuff. This is what, his first, right? His first foray? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, it boggles the mind. So your thought is, it's not really the comic that people are coming after. They, they're, they're backing because of this particular views. And particularly the views that are really pushing are the SJ the anti SJ SJW views. Look, yes. let's get serious. There, there was a time when comics were made for a particular group of people, and um, and that's understandable because that's just the way it was at the time. But times have changed for the love of God. Yes, have some of the changes been controversial and difficult? Yes, I think so. And some of them probably should have been rolled back. I'll go back to this again. I think we said this about Thor. You know, making Thor a woman. We've said this about Ironheart. We've said this about yeah. several characters. Many of you know, our... Many we have no... But yeah. we don't get hung up on this and not move on. You either appreciate the characters or you don't, and you go. But there's some people who've gone on a crusade because the characters cannot change. The characters are stuck in a particular way, and they don't believe there's any change. Look, I well, hated Beta Ray Bill. You know, right, wait, 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 if we want to no, go that I get, far. I get what you're saying, but the thing is that everyone has their hang-ups as far as what they want to see in comics or what they don't. Now, I'm saying we've reviewed, um, I always go to our saga review that we did, which wasn't something that we necessarily liked. I pointed out some issues that I think could have helped the book. I'm saying it's had a hard instance because it wasn't very inclusive. And I think... Um, saga? You're talking about the one with um, the horned animal? Yes, yes. 
It wasn't clear. They didn't let us know who the characters were as they moved. They were just right. doing dialogue. Right, like but that we doesn't, knew them. doesn't mean if it's inclusive in terms of us getting into that comic you're talking about. I don't Not know who the, the characters, characters were. Right. I can't. I didn't feel like it was in, including me or including someone that just picked it off the stands, picked up 44, and said, "Hey, I want to read Saga. I heard it was good." Right, like why like someone said to me, "I want to read X Men." I heard X Men was good. When I read back issues, I read um, the first one I got of the X Men was 132. In that issue, Angel is in the book. They had this thing, hey, the Hellfire Club, do you know these guys? I didn't know who the Hellfire Club was. And they go visit the Hellfire Club after the first question because they ask Angel. Angel's like, hey, I had a connection, only went once. So, but I'll get you guys in there. The X Men get in there, they get attacked, they get totally beat up. And it's been, and then next year at the same time, this other thing happens where there's an enemy within their midst, which is Phoenix, and it's starting the move towards Dark Phoenix. But Dark Phoenix becomes a black queen. It's like, wow, everything is happening, but I know all the characters. I know the Hellfire Club. I know and the And you got that off the 132 30, 30. I just see everything I explained to you. I, didn't, I don't get that. And it's the same thing. All I said with, with Saga was it needed captions so I would understand who these were. Say, this was five years since then, okay. such and such happened, that sort of thing. I'm saying, but everybody has their hang-ups of what they dislike and dislike. But after this point, the book, as you said, you're saying the success of the Kickstarter, it was picked, the book was picked up by Antarctica Press. Mm -hmm. That means it would have an initial sales thing to see if those numbers would also translate to sales in the bookstores. Besides mm -hmm. the people that were getting shipped, the incentives, they'd be, the Antarctica would be selling it at the same time. But then there was a pushback against Antarctica, and this is where the suit comes in, because there was a call between Mark Wade and uh, one of the uh, publishers, I think it's Ben Dunn and Joe Dunn, who are uh, the, uh, the at least owners slash editors in chief of um, Antarctica Press. Right. And from that point, um, Jawbreakers was canceled, and it was they said we're not publishing the book. And the initial thing by but that's what they said is that because of that call, that uh, that's what happened. But now they're doing depositions, and the depositions are saying differently. No, no, that that's publishing. not what's. That's not what they said. Was he Ben Dunn said in the uh, interview that he wasn't. Ex it's been like Pearl Harbor for them when he wrote, and this has been found in um, in Discovery. Like they like, and and if and they says if Mark Wade hadn't gotten involved, you know, if hadn't butted in, that was the exact words. And then there in Discovery, they also had to release text messages, saying of. You know, Mark Wade asking about certain things, saying saying things that you know says that there's a push, and then him wanting the the one of the Joe or Ben Dunn to say that he didn't bully them because he had heard that the publisher was crying to Richard Meyer about the situation, and he wanted it. So then the depositions happen, and it's not it's, um, they're not been that salacious to Antarctica hasn't been tough on on um, Mark Wade, and they haven't said that they directly forced them to cancel the book. And right. that's what they're highlighting in Bleeding Cool and, and in and, what's And that's what they're saying, that he also talked to his staff about whether this was a book that they should do, right? And then the decision ended up being that they didn't proceed. Of course, Mar uh, Mar Meyer's trying to make it seem as though a direct correlation. Not making it seem. He's saying that he's presenting evidence. The only thing that Mark Wade is doing now is saying that it shouldn't take place in in Texas. He's saying, I didn't know I was calling Texas. I wasn't. And then there was also another bit where he said, I don't, I don't do anything in Texas. But he went to a Comic Con in Texas and talked about the situation. So then he had to change his deposition to say, yes, I was there. But when I called, I didn't have the information. I don't know how I got the number, but I got the number through some friend that I don't remember. And then I called. I didn't know I was calling Texas. So ultimately, it could be just delay delay of game, but we yeah, haven't I mean, even got if, to the... If it's occurred there, most likely it's going to be hard for them to change it. Yeah. You know, I mean, of course, the delay, but if the, the whole purpose... If, if Mark Wade is trying to say that... Look, so there's two things that could happen. Mark Wade can say, is saying, and this is what Meyer is saying, that Mark Wade publicized the fact that he stopped the publication of Jawbreakers, right? Yes. Oh, he put in, pressure. in that, text message, he right. also said, um, "But wait, also, wait for a little while, so I don't. It doesn't look like I'm taking a lip, the victory lap." Okay. Yeah. But he was always talking about the damn thing. So what are you talking yeah. about? So it did yeah. look as though he took. Yeah. Now the question is whether or not that influenced him, or was it torturous one, interference? Yes. Or whether that was one of many other factors 
and the factor being that hey this comic really couldn't sell you know if it did a four hundred thousand dollars well I, I, I'm, I'm just it just confounds me in terms of yes. that Kickstarter because it's such a huge number for a comic I mean I don't know well, why it's number seven or eight or ten he has a lot that's the thing he has a lot of followers and a lot of subscribers so I'm not saying it doesn't I think the thing is, is oh, I think you're, one of the issues when we initially talked about it, because we didn't know, there wasn't a case when we first started looking at right. the numbers of the Kickstarter. So we were like, wow, where did these numbers come from? And how did it get so large? But the, one of the things is that one of the issues that you were having, that it looked like a Rob Liefeld book, right? Yes. It didn't look like it was something where you said, well, this is, and that's not to say that, I mean, it's not, I would say it's more of, um, say, uh, older David Finch sort of book, like that sort of thing. Maybe not. I can't. It's hard to say uh, Mark Silvestri, but say it's, let's say David Finch, early David Finch for Image. That's what it's. It look like an Image book. The excitement for Image, that sort of thing. Right. So it's going to be slam bam action, that sort of thing. But you know, comics have moved more towards Vertigo, which is sort of the issue that people are having. Are having this thing which includes all these different markets instead of the gung-ho action film. And the whole point in the past, because I think, um, uh, what was it, Comics Matter, they talk about the way it used to be having uh, Amazing Heroes, but back in the days, Amazing Heroes hated everything. They hated, they liked Alan Moore, they hated the X-Men, they hated, um, they hated basically... And who are Amazing Heroes? Amazing, well, basically, the comics journal was declared themselves as the critiques of comic books. And they had side books where they didn't have to be as rough, which was basically doing interviews with creators. So the, if they had two books, one was Amazing Heroes, and, no, and then one that wasn't connected to... Um, this is basically like Entertainment Weekly or Entertainment Monthly sort of books for comics, and they basically interview comic book pros. Got it. The, com the Comics Journal turned to just critiques, and Amazing Heroes would do just sort of not as tough critiques, but they hated a lot of stuff. So being a fan reading books, and you still, I'm still reading the X-Men, then I read the review, like, Lord, they're just, <laughs> it's rough. It's like, should I, you know, I feel like, an, am I an idiot for reading these books? Do well, I, should you know, I like? People, people are gonna come with some, with, with their whole values or whatever they do. Look, I, it's, but that's, that's, look, look, this is the problem I've always had, is that, look, I'm thinking, yes, we, we understand about the whole thing with the suit. We understand about how he feels. And look, I don't want to have any creator to be, um, what is it, blocked, Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we have I, to, we have freedoms here, and you should be allowed to. If you have a, 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 a publisher who's willing to do it, but this publisher also understands that you know Mark Wade is not just anybody in this industry. He's one of Marvel's top dudes. Marvel's still backing him because he's still making stories. War of the Realms, amongst others, and you have this dude out of the out, out of the blue who basically has an agenda, and he's pushing it towards it. You know, and the the biggest well, thing is that you know we all we this thing. He has an agenda. Marvel has an agenda. Marvel has an agenda. We all have an imagine, agenda. Look, let's look at it serious. Comics Institute, comics make up a small portion. They make millions, if, if that. Okay, there's some comics that make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Comics, comics that sell 15,000 a month, mm -hmm. you know, they're probably going to end up making about a million, 600,000 for the year, right? You know, but if you do several issues and, va and, and, va and variants, you can definitely add it up. And uh, this, I'm not saying you can't do a comic run, but let's look at the seriousness of this. It's, Marvel has a, 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 for their TV shows, they make tens of millions. You know, for their movies, they make billions, right? And so they have to appeal to larger audiences. Whereas the comic audience is a pretty smaller, much older, and more homogeneous, well, I guess it's not, because here in New York, it's, it's pretty all over the place. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, in general, though, it's a much older, uh, more conservative, um, view as opposed to the rest of society. Yeah. And when you go see the Marvel movies, you see everybody of all ages, from little kids to adults to, 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 to people in their, I guess, 60s, 70s. You see all kinds of people, all co colors, all persuasions. And so Marvel's, of course, you know, they're in for the money to do what? Make money. And so they're going to cast as big as a net as they possibly can. I've said this many times but before. Is, and, and is, it, is, and is Marvel casting a big net? I say, look at the Avengers movie, right? Okay. How much... How much time do we get into the relationships of the Avengers in the last two movies, the love affairs? Really? How many of that, like the, like the, like in the Marvel comics, the love triangles, the marriage, all yeah. that stuff was a part of that. And in the Avengers movies, there's basically no time 
to spend on it besides a couple of moments. Maybe Hulk looking at the, you know, looking that's, at that's the, 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 what's the name, the Black Widow. Right. And well, what about so, um, Vision and Scarlet Witch? There was a whole but thing. But we get, we get the, the, okay, they live together, and and, but we not, all of that stuff is off, cam off camera. We get the hint of it? that. No, we see them in the house and say, hey, this is working out. That's not showing having the relationship be a part of the story. So saying all these bits of anything of what your besides your banter right. is sort of sidelined for the story and the movies are hugely successful, which is what comics were. They would have love triangles. They might have a marriage, but the marriage sometimes at the same time would be sort of quick, like they wouldn't even spend time for an engagement. The first engagement is like Superman. But well, we get that, you know. I mean, but I'm saying that it, the fact of the with being totally inclusive is just basically doing a powerful story with the um, with the Avengers, not dealing with their sexuality, this, that, and the other. And that's the, I think that's the basic argument is like we're getting bogged down. And I think maybe the way the comics matter went about it and how they sort of you know everyone is sort of, we've been insulting and. Slashing at people, but it's like I wouldn't say insulting and slashing. I think we've just been given our, our, our we can be tough opinion. about our honest stuff. opinion, and we've been straight. Some things have been pretty rough. I just don't feel that the, a group of people should go out and decide. You know what? We're helping people by forcing someone not to publish a book because it would hurt even more if Antarctica Press put it out there and people didn't buy it. But then you had retailers saying we're not going to buy it. Because in your like, but you can have the same thing where people can buy something that's not that's pretty destructive, and that's not good at all too. It's, what do you mean? You're saying that the thing is like, so I mean like that's the thing. If we we're, <laughs> we're picking and choosing our fights, and we're saying okay, let's go in there and decide to, to tear something down. But most of the thing is for shock value to wake up and say, oh, this person is bad. Oh, this is a person is that, and is it directly connecting to anything? I don't know. But I don't think that you should. A group of people should go and attack this thing, and you know they are attacking other out. things. Look, if you if you this is the problem I hate. You want to attack others and disparage what they say, mm -hmm. and when they attack you, you want to complain. Oh well, you're a public figure, so you shouldn't be allowed to do it. So then, why are you attacking them? It's mm -hmm. not right. Either way. So you're you saying that wait, so in the, in relation to this, you're saying that they're atta he's attacking them or just he's attacking uh, Wade clearly. And, uh, he, how did he, he? He's insulted Wade probably in, <laughs> in the past. I'm pretty sure that he's gone through. You know, he, if you read some of the reviews, but I don't think that the reviews are any worse than any tougher than the reviews I've done and the reviews in Amazing Heroes. So reviews in Amazing Heroes don't get into the SJW all these current terms that don't mean anything. Right. Like. I get that part of it, but I mean, you have to remember that comic reviews, the thing is that we're in a new golden age, right, where uh -huh. the writers are stronger than the thing. So most of the time people talk about old comics, they say they're not even, they're not that good. I just think that the reviews at points are, are what they are. Reviewers can be tough, they can have a moment that something that says something that hits you in the gut and hurts you, makes you feel bad about this, but as a creator, you're supposed to just, excuse me for that, you're supposed to just power through with your story that you were telling, that you were hitting your marks. And if it's, if it's working, if, you, if Mark Wade is making his money, do that. If Richard Meyer makes his book and it works well on, on in the Indiegogo, it doesn't mean it's going to sell that much in the stands. Just let it go out there. And if it dies out, if you decide, but the comic book industry is in a bad shape to be fighting this sort of little war, you know, and this case is different because this is saying he interfered with it. Whereas if if he hadn't made the call, or whatever that call, no one will actually. I don't think we'll get to hear all that information about what happened in the initial calls. But it's just hard to say. I mean, comic reviews are tough. It's yeah, good I, I agree, they're they're tough. You know what I'm trying to say? But you have to also be. The problem I hate is like. You look at the pundits that you see on TV sometimes, and they go all the way to the freaking left, or they go all the way to the freaking yeah. right. And sometimes what you get is, you know, as opposed to saying, you know, I disagree with something, and these mm -hmm. are my reason explanations for why I disagree with it. And don't get me wrong, um, Comic Matters, I think, has done that sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it's like in every single one, it's like he continually pushes going that way. So look, I don't knock it. If you really are into that, just finding this is your type of thing where you like to knock, and that makes you feel comfortable doing what you have to do, so be it. And if Wade is doing that on his own, then you know what? You're guilty as hell, and then you are going to probably have to go too. 
But right well, now, I don't think it, it, but right now, I don't think it looks like he's going to have to do that because they look. They're saying it was a, 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 a more well, than just way doing it. So I, I think, I think if um, I think Wade can lose this and still come out unscathed because he already did an Indiegogo for the his legal fees. Hmm. So if he loses it, they're probably going to settle at some point. If he loses. I mean, that's how, how how do you how do you continue if you lose? No, that's what the law. That, that's what also the the there's a t couple sites, but the comic matter the site they're also saying the lawyers already teach you a different way of understanding what winning and losing is. So that's what Wade is doing. Wade is saying yes, we're still we haven't get jurisdiction out, but you know, Ben Dunn said, didn't say that I forced him to do that. He said he didn't prevent, you know, like, that's a victory. We won. Oh, my god. We won that. And, that's like, that's what every, and for everyone, that's the same thing. Well, that's with, a pretty low Richard, bar. But I'm saying if Richard, Meyer, that if Richard Meyer doesn't get the money he asked for, and it's like... 400000 Or whatever it is. Maybe they get it down to half of that. He, they'll be like... You know, we got this amount of money. And, they, and then Mark Wade will be like, well, they wanted this and we got that. So it's like the okay, same thing actually, we're saying. You got a good point there. You so, got a good point. I, but I think it's Wade is, Wade is um, I mean, we've argued this between us. Uh, and as fans of Mark Wade's writing, you know, I think he can lose this and it'd be no effect. Like Richard Meyer would be on the side to his fans. And this is not an insult. He'll be his fan and say, we won. And there'll be that much people because basically... We've learned to be able to accept two points and people be on two sides of the fences and the two never meet, you know, because we're, there's three million people who are fans of Mark Wade. Like, why do they need to now say, you know what, uh, Meyer was right, he shouldn't have done that. They're like, no, they're going to be like, well, he was still, he did this, he's this, he's that. Yeah, he's I, it's just like DC and MCU fans. Yeah. Like, All right, so I see a point. Look. This um, was a tough one. It really was a tough one because, you know, <laughs> I don't see the problem. If Mark Wade feels as though he wants to tell people and give his opinion on something, which is a legit thing, you know, which people he do all the time. He was, you know? was kind of rough. And his, it's the same way. Look, the, the, you the, can't the, say, Peter, we, we're, going about, we're beating around the same bush. What bush? I, you, look, look, you can say, here it is. You can say, look, I want to write this comic book. And I can say, I think that's a crazy idea. And you're going to go over to the publisher and I say, listen, I think that's a comic book I don't think you really should be writing. You interfere with what I did. But that's just my opinion. Interference, no, no, but you can't. You, you're not, can, what is your what thing. is your what is your connection to publishing the book? My connection is I think it's a bad idea. They don't take reviews. Tortious interference is where Mark Wade would have had to have had the power to say stop, don't publish it. If you do, here are the consequences, and we don't see that in any of the things that Mark Wade has said. There are consequences for not publishing. They did. There is some of the what text messages say? where they say. The hardest part is the stuff that is unclear that hasn't come out that um, Antarctica Press has a company that does their coloring that's connected to Marvel. Okay. That does stuff as a favor. So it could have been a saying as a possible, but none of this stuff has come out yet. So the problem is, is that there is stuff where he hints at saying, tell me that I didn't tell, say, because he's probably got the guy in text messages saying, say I didn't bully you. And the guy wouldn't do that. But he hasn't said that Wade has. Instead, of, the only thing he said in text messages is that Mark Wade butted in, put butted, put his nose. If he, if he hadn't but put his nose in it, and he got to see the dark underbelly of Marvel, he's never said what that's meant. Sure, well, those are some big freaking accusations you're making there, and I, I I don't know about that. What do you mean? Because if you're saying that 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 basically you're saying, hey. You know, if you publish it, this this public, does your anchor is going to go, or your colorist may go. I don't know. No, that's I, the I, thing. Yeah, but that's what I'm trying to say. It, it has to be more than just saying, "Hey, I think that's a bad idea." People write things all the time and say, "Stop, this guy's a bad idea, and don't do it." You know, right now they have the the, the Metropolitan Museum where they stopped the uh, president of Brazil from having a, a, a state dinner there because they say, "Yo, this dude is like a nutcase. Let's not include him in this thing." Mm -hmm. And so now you're telling, you, you're saying that, but I, Mar the only way it works is unless Marvel. He or Marvel using their influence and power. And I don't know if that's ever going to come out. Exactly. And so if that's the case, Mark Wade is, is clear. Because he gave his He opinion. might be clear, but it's, you know. Dude, Mark, you got enough He money. has no connection just, just to. Just settle the thing called AA. <laughs> yeah, there you we go. I mean, and that, move on to, and, and, and get your yeah, butt he's in gonna... the studio making some more. <laughs> that's what you need to be doing. Yes, yeah. You know? That's what I feel. And I, <laughs> thank you, Mario. I almost lost him. You always went to sleep on me on no, this I one. No, I did not.